Hi and welcome back to Scotty's Tech.info. I'm Scotty with my co-host Cletus and today I want to talk about the big microprocessor wars that are going on. So you probably know that uh, to date uh, Intel has been kind of uh, uh, kicking everybody's butt uh, at least in terms of desktop and laptop processors and recently in the past couple of years AMD has come back into the fore uh, especially with their Ryzen processors, uh, especially the Ryzen Threadripper processors, which are basically blazingly fast. So, of course, it seems that AMD is on the rise. Intel has been having problems with their various lithography processes. They've come out with uh, several iterations of new processors. They're not really revolutionary. They're more evolutionary changes. Um, they've been struggling to get, uh, they've been stuck at 14 nanometer, the 14 nanometer lithography process for years and years while other companies, including AMD, are moving on to 10 nanometer, 7 nanometer. And of course, the, the, the smaller the, the lithography process, the better the lithography process. Uh, that basically just means the smaller the little traces they can make in, inside uh, the microchip itself. Uh, the smaller the little transistors, the switches that make up a microprocessor, the smaller they all are, the more power efficient they are, the faster they are. That's the long and the short of it. Uh, so it seems like AMD is on the rise. Intel is kind of kind of floundering. They're, they're sort of kind of, it seems like maybe they're sort of dying. They're not very good anymore. And then on top of all that, you have Apple who recently came out and launched their new M1 processor which is supposedly this kind of system on a chip and it's going to revolutionize everything and their processor is better and it's two or three times faster than the best thing that Intel or AMD has and of course everyone is claiming the performance crown. So the question is what the heck is actually going on here and who really does have the best processor? Okay, so first of all let's take a look at AMD. Now AMD came out with their Ryzen processors um, they have more cores, they're faster. If you read benchmarks, you discover that, yes, in fact, uh, especially AMD's Threadripper processors, they are faster than Intel's best desktop chips. Um, they're blazingly fast. And so pretty much everyone is buying machines with uh, uh, AMD processors. People are buying more laptops with AMD processors. AMD is on the rise. The problem, as I see it, is that when you actually look at the benchmarks, um, when you're talking about the mid-range processors, two, three hundred dollars that most people would buy, uh, Intel still actually holds kind of a comfortable lead. Now I realize that that's probably going to irk many AMD fans out there, but I simply went and looked and read the benchmarks, and um, as far as I'm concerned, Intel's processors still have a slight edge in terms of what most people are going to be doing. Sure, AMD processors are faster for uh, certain multimedia tasks for certain types of games, blah, blah, blah. But this is always the problem with benchmarks. And, of course, you can make the same argument about in Intel's processors. Um, Intel processors are, are generally better at certain things, but they're not quite as fast as other things, blah, blah, blah. Now, none of this is anything new. And uh, the other problem is that when we read about benchmarks, many of the ones that I read, the articles, they ran a bunch of benchmarks, and, you know, they're saying... Basically, ah, oh, the, the Ryzen Threadripper, it's like the fastest processor ever. And then I'm going like, right, but how much does this thing cost? So I go on Amazon and I look at prices and these things are upwards of like multiple thousands of dollars. And I'm going, well, right, but that's not the processor that most people are going to buy. They're going to buy a more mainstream processor. So then I look at the benchmarks for the mainstream processors versus the Intel mainstream processors. And I'm going, well, hang on a minute here. Actually, the Intel ones are still a little faster. Not for everything, but for some things, the things that matter the most to me, right? So it kind of depends, and um, I'm kind of having flashbacks at this point to, uh, it was right about 1999, AMD released their Athlon processor, uh, the first Athlon. There were a whole series of them. Uh, I think it was 1999. And over the next couple of years, 2002, 2003, the Athlon 64 came out, eventually the Athlon 64 X2, or whatever they called it. And at that time, Intel was struggling with their Pentium 3 processor. Uh, the Athlons were faster. Then they released the Pentium 4. And the Pentium 4, as you may recall, was, well, it was a beast. Um, but the problem was that even though it was a beast, it was just sucking power like crazy. These things ran very, very hot. And so AMD kind of had the, the edge for a while. 
But Intel had sort of an ace up its sleeve, which is its uh, chip design center in Israel. This uh, Israeli chip design center actually designed the Pentium M, and later the core processors, which turned into the Core 2 Duo, blah, blah, blah. And that actually basically turned the tables again because this new core architecture was energy efficient, it was very fast, it was everything that the Pentium 4 wasn't. And that was sort of the beginning of the end for AMD's rise to two fame. Um, yeah, because the Intel processors were better. And uh, until just a few years ago, Intel pretty much once again dominated the desktop and laptop space in terms of microprocessors. So here we are, almost 20 years, 17 years later, and kind of the same thing is happening. So it may seem like, uh, you know, Intel is out of the game, but they have announced uh, some interesting things for 2021. Uh, at the time of filming, it is December 2020, and uh, you can hop on the net and read some interesting articles about Intel's next generation processor, which they're calling Alder Lake. Now, okay, yes, Intel is having problems with their lithography process. Um, part of the reason for that, I think, is because they, they're using a different uh, it's kind of a different architecture. It's it's not just the lithography process that matters. It's also uh, the type of, of of transistors that they're actually creating with the lithography process, like super thin, and uh, there's all kinds of different things that different companies do. And this is one of the reasons why, say, uh, smartphone ARM microprocessor manufacturers are getting down to such tiny lithography processes because it's kind of like comparing apples and oranges. So Intel is going to be supposedly releasing Alder Lake uh, sometime in 2021, probably the second half of 2021. And the reason this matters is because they're supposedly going to use their 10 nanometer plus SFE, blah, blah, blah. They're giving it some crazy name, but it's a 10 nanometer process. But more importantly, it's supposedly an entirely new architecture. And they're going to go with a sort of a, a big dot little architecture, which basically means... Uh, the the mainstream, say, desktop processor will have eight uh, n kind of normal high-power fast cores coupled with eight low-power winky cores. And this is something that you may recognize this big dot little. This comes from uh, the smartphone processor world. Uh, ARM processors were, I believe, the first to do this big dot little thing. And the idea is quite simply that, sure, you have 16 cores, but you don't need all 16 of those cores to be super blazingly fast, because the faster they are, the more power they consume. So you want half of them to be high-powered, super-duper cores, and you want the other half to be little winky cores that can't quite, you know, crunch numbers quite as fast, but they're extremely low power. So the idea here is that, say, uh, when Windows is running, you would have, uh, you know, if you're doing video editing or something, those might use the, the eight big cores. Uh, but when the computer is doing background tasks, like maybe scanning for viruses or checking emails, it would use the little cores. And by doing this, you end up with an extremely energy-efficient machine, and everything just sort of runs better. Now, the other thing that Intel is supposedly going to include is uh, this thing called 3D chip stacking, where um, it's kind of hairy, but they're going to sort of stack components on top of one another, and this is going to allow them to do fancy stuff, and it gets kind of complicated, but um, suffice it to say that uh, Alder Lake is going to be a new a new package, a new type of processor packaging, it's going to be a, a new-ish lithography process, and it's going to be a, a radically different architecture. Now the problem with this radically different architecture is that it requires software support. Now if it was any other company doing this, in fact AMD has said, no, nah, no, nah, we're not going to do that big, big dot little thing because the software doesn't support it. But Intel um, they're pretty big, they're kind of the chip behemoth, and they actually do have the expertise to sort of help the software along. Uh, what exactly that's going to look like, I don't know, but I'm guessing that they're probably working closely with, say, Microsoft uh, to create some sort of driver or software layer that's going to allow operating systems like Windows to take full advantage of their new big dot little architecture. So we probably shouldn't totally discount Intel yet, because sure, just like almost 20 years ago, Intel kind of fell down, AMD took advantage, they came out with some, some awesome new processors, um, but Intel isn't down for the count, they've been working hard behind the scenes, and they're working on this whole new architecture, uh, I'm guessing that next year when it's released, it's going to be a humdinger. 
Okay, so next we also have Apple. Now, as you know, Apple used to use PowerPC chips, and of course at the time, you know, the, the iMac G5, and of course they were talking about these PowerPC-based processors as if they were the best thing since sliced bread, and of course the, they were always advertising that it's two, three, four times faster than the best Intel processor, blah, blah, blah. And again, when you looked at the benchmarks, yes, PowerPC, the PowerPC architecture, it was better for certain things, but Intel's processors were better for most desktop processing things, so kind of depended on what you wanted to do. Then, interestingly enough, in spite of the fact that Apple said that PowerPC was so much better than Intel, they ended up switching to Intel's des desktop and laptop processors, which kind of shows you uh, how good PowerPC was, because if it was that great, then how come yep, Apple would have switched to Intel processors, and how come uh, everybody would have said... Uh, all the end users were basically saying, wow, these new Intel-based Macs are like literally twice as fast as my old PowerPC box. Um, I don't think that was just generational improvements in Intel processors. Um, that's because, yeah, for most computing tasks that most people do, the Intel processors were better. Which makes the Apple's recent announcement even more interesting because now they're saying we're going to switch to this, M this M1 chip. And this is kind of an interesting animal because it's a SOC, a system on a chip, uh, which means that it, it's a chip that encompasses basically everything. It's the, the system on, chi on a chip is kind of like the, it's, it's what you use in a smartphone and a tablet. It's essentially one little package that contains uh, the CPU, the GPU, the RAM, uh, any sort of neural processing or AI processing. Everything is sort of incorporated into one chip, into one package. And what that means is that you don't have to, you're, you know, obviously your design for the, for the gizmo is simpler, um, but it also means for things like laptops and desktops that if Apple chooses to use an M1 or an M1 type processor in all of their computers, uh, you lose upgradability. Uh, if you're using integrated graphics and there's, you know, is there a way to actually uh, add an external graphics card and upgrade it? Uh, if you're using an M1 processor, uh, the RAM is either it's either 8 gigs or 16 gigs at the moment. You can't you can't increase it. Now the question is, well, you know, so far a Apple has released um, uh, a laptop with the M1 in it. Um, people are reviewing it. They're saying, yeah, it's pretty awesome. It's super energy efficient. You know, yada yada. Um, okay, how does it stack up in terms of performance? The M1 is a, a smartphone and tablet chip essentially that Apple is supposedly tweaking and making better for desktop use. But again, we, you know, we kind of have the whole PowerPC versus Intel comparison where uh, ARM processors are exceptionally good at certain tasks, but for, say, traditional desktop uh, workloads, spreadsheets and, you know, browsing the web and, you know, your occasional video editing and stuff, um, most likely it's not going to be so super duper in spite of the benchmarks. And of course, everyone always says that their processor is so much faster than the the opposition's, right? So it's a very interesting path that Apple has chosen to take, and uh, it remains to be seen. Uh, it's very early days for the M1. Uh, obviously, this is uh, beneficial for Apple because instead of having Intel-based Macs and ARM-based uh, iPhones and, and iPads, uh, they have one ARM architecture for their whole infrastructure for all of their products. And that means they, they have a lot less work to do, which is probably one of the primary reasons they went in that direction. So the question is, which processor is the best? Well, as I said earlier, it's kind of an apples to oranges comparison. Uh, AMD and, and Intel are obviously using the, the x86 type architecture. Uh, Apple has now switched from Intel to the ARM-based architecture. Uh, they're all going to claim they have the performance crown. Uh, if you're in the market for a new laptop or desktop, honestly, I would just wait until next year. Uh, the first reason is because it would be wise to see what Intel's new Alder Lake offerings actually provide in terms of performance, uh, performance per watt, uh, price. The second reason is that right now with the lockdown and everything that's happened, uh, there are very widespread component shortages. So, you know, Intel may announce like, oh, we just released our uh, 11,000 series processors and it's like, you know, good luck trying to find one. NVIDIA comes out and announces their new 3,000 series of graphics cards and they're super duper fast, but oh, sorry, there's a shortage. And uh, yeah, a lot of that has to do with 
uh, the lockdown component shortages uh, and so on and so right now is not really an ideal time to buy any computer parts in fact there are even shortages of simple computer components like power supplies they're hard to find uh, you may have tried to buy a webcam say like a logitech uh, 920 type webcam it's a good webcam it's about eighty dollars uh, they're sold out everywhere the only thing you can find on Amazon these days are basically cheap Chinese knockoffs because everyone bought up all the webcams, component shortages, and so, yeah, so uh, my recommendation would be wait until next year, like give it six months and uh, see where uh, the chips fall. And finally, you know, like I said, we've been here before, you know, AMD rises, Intel falls, then Intel comes back up, and then AMD sort of falls a little, and it's just kind of... Uh, the same cycle over and over again. Um, with Apple, it's the same thing. They used to be PowerPC, they poo pooed Intel, then they switched to Intel. Now they're poo pooing Intel, switching over to ARM, uh, which is in some ways similar to the old PowerPC chips. And, you know, it's, it's just kind of everything cycling back and forth. And of course, everyone is claiming that theirs is the best. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, yeah, you, you just have to sort of be a little practical about it. Um, be patient if possible. See what Intel comes out with. Uh, see what the new Macs are like if if you actually like the Mac infrastructure, the Mac OS, and um, go from there. But um, yeah, one good thing about all of this is that with the rise of AMD, uh, that's actually a good thing for everyone because that means Intel is sort of forced to innovate a little bit more instead of being so static and resting on their laurels. And then of course you have Apple coming in and picking a totally different architecture. So it's actually kind of exciting because now we have a little bit more competition going on and that generally results in uh, much better chips, faster, faster chips, more energy efficient chips, and finally lower prices because if you want to beat the competition you have to outsell them. So in the end we as consumers will probably benefit from all this insanity and that's a good thing. For more techie tips see scottystech.info. Thanks for watching. See you next time.